Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are in grand finals for IPL4 qualifiers. V8, and against all authority, V8 is one game away from getting their trip to Vegas comped. We're hitting the game two. What, what does Triple A need to do in order to come back to this? Uh, they need to, I don't know, do a lot of things different. I'm just, I'm surprised to see how much uh, aggression we've been seeing from V8. They've yeah. Really, just been um, taking over. I'm, I'm really curious to see them matched up against. Uh, you know, there is a sort, somewhat of a latency issue. You know. I, I mean, a lot of it's coming down to just the fantastic early game aggression of V8, but to be fair, you know, maybe some of those bindings from Morgana may be dodged if, uh, you know, it's on an even thing. But even so, th their aggressive play, you know, taking objectives early, pushing down towers, that's the one thing that we've really seen from V8 is their tendency to aggressively push down towers. So, uh, <laughs> and yeah. That, so, and so we have everyone in the game. We are ready to go. We actually, Takashi was asking me to do a shout out to UVA viewers, so I, I will go ahead. I didn't realize both Takashi and uh, Tri Eskimo went to UVA, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, we'll learn, learn a little bit more about our players, so uh, we'll let these guys know that we are ready to go when they are, and then we can just get right into game number two. So, I mean, what was uh, yeah. Against All Authorities jungle last game? Uh, it was Shivana? It was Shivana into jungle last game. So, I mean, we may see... We may see we may see something different, or we may see Shivana top uh, top lane if they just, uh, end up picking her again. But uh, wait, so Triple A has uh, first ban, first pick, and Morgana immediately out of there. Yeah, it's uh, and that's the thing. She provides so much control. She's difficult to gank, so you're not really going to affect her in lane. A lot of times, Morgana lanes will turn into a farm lane, but if she can be aggressive, get off that ultimate, uh, she will have the follow-up snare, and it is very difficult for them to avoid the skill shots. So to take out those skill shot champions, Cassiopeia as well just can absolutely dominate a game, uh, get out of control really quickly, and just completely win every single team fight. So it makes sense to ban excuse me, those kind of champions. Yeah, and Cassiopeia, you know, focused, focused ban towards V8. V8 sticking with the same bands they did last game so far. Kennedy and Karthus, Rammus was the third one they did game one. Maokai being banned out by Triple A. They saw what happened against Mono. Do not want to have to deal with it here. V8 sticking with the same bands. Yeah, and so um, did V8 play Maokai this past game? V8 played Maokai against Mono. Oh, okay, yeah. And they, and, and... Against all authority, did their homework. They were they were watching, and knew what exactly to ban. So good. I mean, good on I mean, good on AAA for doing their homework. Yeah, and it's it's the early aggression from Maokai, which is the issue, and that the twisted advance is just so easy to set up kills. Um, you know, particularly if you don't immediately get out of the way, you need to have you know quick reaction to get out of there. So the flash twisted advance, it makes sense to get rid of those aggressive junglers. So starting off, we do have Udir for uh, AAA. That'll probably be their top lane. It could also be the jungle. Uh, we'll have to see. I believe AAA against CLG EU played Tiger Udir to you know pretty great extent. They had a lot of physical damage getting those early Dorans. Were able to burst people down. Yep. Tarek being picked by AAA. Graves coming in as well. So you know, do you want to keep Graves away from V8? They know V8's amazing with Graves. They just do not want to even fathom. They, they don't even want to give them the opportunity. And Tarek, have, we haven't seen, been seen a lot of Tarek in the qualifiers. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Tarek's just a all-around st uh, strong champion. He gives you a heal in lane. He's got some nice bursts. He's got the stun. So, you know, he provides a lot. Uh, it's just, I don't know, he's kind of generic, to be honest. A lot of, you know, other champions provide a little bit more damage or a little bit more sustain in lane. But uh, it will be a nice, you know, strong lane um, you know, if V8's trying to be aggressive in that bot lane, they can get the stun, but the Sivir pick along with Janna will be, you know, a pretty good counter that because Sivir can use the shield to block some of the damage from Graves or block the stun if uh, Tarek's trying to go on her. So Sivir is going to want to be staying up very aggressively in that lane, make sure they don't have the opportunity to engage onto Janna. And then with Shivana and Ryze, they already have an extremely tanky team. Ryze will be really strong in that mid lane, and then Shivana in the jungle, really aggressive, uh, you know, fast jungler. And they'll all provide these nice big bodies to sit in front of Sivir, who's a fantastic late game carry. Um, you know, has great sustained DPS and just lots of AOE damage. So right now, I mean, I'm definitely liking their team. Uh, against all authority, this is, I mean, they're kind of, I don't know, a generic team right now. Graves is definitely going to be strong in that bot lane. He provides a lot of burst, but we'll have to see what their last two picks are 
and that'll really kind of shape what they're looking for. I mean, we we had our discussion earlier during the Mono V8 match about Sivir, and you know, Sivir does increasingly well against you know champions like Graves or um, uh, Vayne as well. You know, they have they have their ability to go ahead, you know, they to be more mobile. Like Graves has the dash, Vayne has the tumble. And Sivir does really well against those types of champions. She has her boomerang blade, can be very predictive about where movement is going to happen and punish it. And Malzahar and Warwick, we got the double suppress coming in from against all authority. I have not seen that in forever. Yeah, so it's actually, it's kind of interesting. They have, you know, a really good team for picking people off. Udyr is going to go in the jungle, and then uh, Warwick, you know, will be a nice, strong, sustained top lane. Malzahar is generally a pretty safe laner. He can farm very easily, so that'll be, you know, basically a farm lane in mid. However, once they start, you know, being more aggressive as a team, they have a lot of disables, uh, a lot of, you know, kill potential to pick up some early kills. Not as great of a team fight presence as V8 has. Um, you know, they will have some sustainability. Warwick and Udyr will both be extremely tanky. We'll have some nice AoE damage from both Graves and Malzahar, but uh, definitely a better teamfight presence from V8. However, against all authority in those small engages could potentially try and pick up a couple of kills early on. And there's not a lot of means of disabling uh, the suppress from, you know, Malzahar and Warwick. And, you know, Vladimir also doesn't have uh, a means. There's only Janna to, uh, you know, disengage for them. So these are your teams. And we're going to have a quick remake going on here. So <coughs> your teams for game number two. V8 has Janna, Shivana, Sivir, Rise, and Vladimir. Against all authority, picking Udyr, Graves, Tarek, Malzahar, and Warwick. So Mal Malzahar, Warwick. Like, when, when I first started doing Ranked uh, quite a while ago, like, it was a pretty, pretty beastly combo. I mean, it's been a while. It's been, it's been like, at least maybe a year or so, maybe maybe a little bit shorter than that. Since I've started seeing like you know that specific combo, is there any particular reason why? Well, it's it's just not you know honestly that strong throughout the game. And V8 has a vastly superior team fight team uh, coming into the mid game, and then you know particularly to the late game. Morwick top. He's a very safe laner, but he's not going to deal any damage to Vladimir, basically. Vladimir is going to have a free farm in top lane. So late game, we're going to have all these tanky champions for V8. We're going to have Vladimir for that hard AP carry, dealing massive AoE damage. Sivir sitting back, dealing a lot of damage. So, you know, there's the downside. Uh, against all authority, they don't have a very strong team comp as the game progresses. However, early in the game, it is very easy to pick up kills, and they will be very safe in lane. And we saw V8 getting to an early advantage, uh, Warwick, a little bit vulnerable to ganks, but he's not going to be vulnerable to lane harass. So he will be, you know, pretty safe uh, to farm up there as long as he keeps good map control, um, you know, has some good vision. Shivana, not, you know, the best ganker. So uh, it will be difficult to move Warwick out of lane. But uh, really what Against Authority is trying to do is see once they kind of start grouping up as a team, uh, maybe lots of mobility from Against All Authority, try and pick up those easy kills with the combo. They do have that potential. Yep. So, um, we you know we also had the Udir pickup. We had the Terra pickup. I, I mean, I think you know, against all authority, you know, they've seen what VA can do. They've seen their aggression. Now they're trying to uh, now now I can see like you know trying to to be counter aggression with aggression. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna have like massive clashes. I feel once we start hitting you know massive clashes early mid game just all across the board. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the big concern is going to be, you know, how the team fight engages go because we don't have a really strong means of against all authority, uh, you know, keeping them to, to, of initiating on V8 and keeping them in place. Mm -hmm. You know, they they do they will be able to p potentially pick up some easy kills. However, if they're trying to chase them down, Sivir and Janna provide the team uh, V8 with excellent kiting capabilities, and then at the same time, you know, they will be able to pick people off with like Rise. Uh, you know, V8 doesn't have the best engage either, but as long as they farm and, you know, go for objectives, they will be able to control them and, you know, get enough of a goal advantage. But it, it should be really interesting to see how the Udyr jungle, um, you know, will affect uh, the game. Udyr is, you know, more significant ganker than Shivana. They're both extremely fast in the jungle, so we won't really need to worry about 
uh, them counter jungling each other as much. I mean, it will happen, but it's not going to be you know game breaking for the most part. We'll have to see you know where that goes. But uh, it, I don't know. It should be interesting. Malzahar, you know, the, the AOE from Malzahar will be nice in the you know mid team fights, but they don't if. If all these tanks from B8 are able to collapse on them, then they don't have a really good means of disengaging for against all authority. Yep. And you know, V8 you know doesn't really have a whole lot in the CC department either. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like Rise. You know, just you, know, you have the Prism, and in terms of hard CC, that's really all you got. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, Jana could come in. You know, if you know, if Jana decides to take Flash, we can go ahead. We can see. We can see something. We could see something like Flash Ultimate. Backwards, you know, getting triple A to you know, for, you know, disperse them and start singling them out. Uh, but that's, honestly, yeah. they're basically just going to play, you know, kind of defensively yeah. with the matchup. Uh, V8, once their team gets kind of rolling, if against all authority hasn't taken that early game advantage, then V8 doesn't really need to, uh, you know, force fights. They can just go up, push towers, force against all authority to engage, and then when they do, just you know. I don't know, basically take care of business. But yeah. I, I don't know. It'll be kind of interesting to see. We did see TCM versus, uh, I'm sorry, no, who was it? It was MTW versus Absolute Legends the other day. We did a little show match, and they played Warwick, and it didn't really seem like it was going to be that effective. They, you know, kind of lost early in the game, but then Warwick was able to, you know, give them an advantage through the late game. He is going to sustain very well, and then the potential for picking people off, if... If they can get off on Sivir, the only concern is she has that shield. She has Janet to protect her. Yep. So the game is loading up. Let's go ahead. Let's get right into it. Welcome back. IPL 4 Qualifiers. We're in Grand Finals. V8 versus Against All Authority. We're going to game number two. V8 has already won game one if they win this. They win the first seed from the qualifiers, and they get their trip to Vegas comp. To recap the bans, V8 has banned out Kennen, Karthus, and Ramis once again. Against all authority has banned out Morgana, Cassiopeia, and Maokai. They've done their homework. They know the bans needed to make against V8. And now we're just going to see the war of the aggressive aggressors. Yeah, I ran out. I ran out. I'm sorry. <laughs> aggressive, because that's what aggressors do. They're aggressive. What am I? What am I saying? Anyway, we're going yeah, right into the game. It's. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's, it's 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 been a good day. It's been a fantastic day. It's been it's, a good weekend. It's, it's been, been a fantastic it's weekend. It's been a great weekend. And you know, everyone's every. You know, we had an amazing time all weekend. I mean, making Dan's, sure. Yeah, Dan's. You know, been a champ. Casting out there, I'll yep. give him another shout out. He's they, probably sleeping, so he's, he's not even you know, hearing it. But uh, but yeah, big big props to Dan Chowster, all of Dignitas for coming by yesterday, and you know especially thank all of you at home watching these matches, and we hope that you can come join us as well for uh, IPL four if you're in the neighborhood. Tickets dot uh, yep, we got the address is uh, tickets dot uh, ign dot com. Yeah, tickets.ign.com, and yep. it is a $50,000 tournament, $25,000 first prize. We do have prizes going all the way down the pool. Yep. So everyone who comes is, you know, taking home a little uh, bit of something. So it should be exciting. Uh, looking at this game, the one concern that I have, you know, with, I don't know, what Against All Authority is trying to do, picking people off with Malzahar and with Warwick, um, you know, also Udyr, of course, is... Rise is going to naturally build tanky and naturally build a, ra uh, a banshees. I mean, that's, you know, it's in his core item build, and the banshees will kind of prevent Malzahar from bursting him down early on. So it might be very difficult for him to pick up early kills. Um, you know, Malzahar might be forced to roam into other lanes, but if if they can play defensively enough, maybe he'll miss out on farm. Mm. I don't know. It should be interesting to see later in the game. The silence from Malzahar is very good at picking off Banshees because it has an excellent range. And we actually have V8 coming down here to steal the Wraiths uh, and the Wolves as well. Uh, against all authority, did see them, so they did back off. Mm -hmm. But uh, that will set Udyr a little bit behind, though he's generally a pretty comfortable jungler regardless. Yep. And also, I also want to make note of the one ward that uh, against all authority has actually made by mid in the river in the bush. Like, they're very wise to know that you know how V8 is doing these level one team fights, how they're doing their invades. So you know they they've warded out the bush, you know expecting them to make the approach in on red, but they actually decided to go in on blue this time. But uh, last game, game one, they actually knew where they were coming in for the invade. Yeah, and uh, 
Malzahar should generally be pretty safe because Shivana's not the most aggressive jungler, but the concern is that Ryze is a, an extremely aggressive champion mid, so, you know, doesn't want to get put uh, behind early if Shivana's uh, coming in. So we will see Malzahar kind of tend towards the bottom uh, part of this lane and not allow that engage. We do have Udyr, uh, Linek coming in in this bottom lane, not going to be able to get anything there. But, um, yeah, by keeping this ward down here, Malzahar can uh, tend towards the bottom portion of this lane, not be worried about Shivana chunking him for any HP, and uh, be able to farm effectively, which is going to be really key early in this game. And we actually have Udyr coming in to steal the blue buff from V8, which, you know, would be pretty nice, but Udyr is actually kind of getting caught. We're going to have a slow no. I'm not sure what did Janna get first uh, shield, so a little bit of damage going to back off and going to be okay there. Yep. Everyone returning to lane just as per usual. Takashi X did fantastic work as Morgana. Game one, we'll see what you can do with Rise. Game two, Shivana going in now. Dia Blue, uh, four v eight has been warded by against all authority. Wonderful aggressive wards coming down from them as well. But uh, for now, like Triple A is actually, you know, they got the pushing game going down. Pat. But the uh, top lane, Warwick is uh, Warwick is definitely struggling in these early levels, and will can continue to do so until he gets a few more points in his queue. And this is one of the uh, another issue for Warwick is that he's he has a very difficult time of pushing the lane. A lot of times you used to see Warwick go with the Riggles, not because he necessarily needed the life steal. Um, it did give him some lane pushing. Since the nerf of Riggles, you know, he would never do that again. He will be looking for a uh, fast wit's end to have a little bit more control against Vladimir, but even so, he's a single target DPS. And we actually have the sn uh, stun going off in the Muffin Cutie. He's going to go down quickly. One more attack will be able to do it, and yes. Yellow is able to pick up the kill. So, Good uh, job. Yeah, a nice little advantage in bot lane. And they do have a very aggressive kill lane with the stun from Tarek, um, you know, and the burst that Graves has. Yep, see now this is how you counter aggression with more aggression like we're about to see here. Tree Eskimo wandering into the tribush and Linek is there laying in wait. Quite a bit of damage just from that phase check. But the concern is uh, Linek is very far behind. You see he's two levels behind Shivana. So yep. these ganks, you know, he's helping his team a little bit, but not that significantly. The flash in from Takashi will potentially be able to get it, but they're actually not, not going gonna to bother. go for it. Uh, he probably could have done it and got, gotten the kill there. So I'm a little bit surprised he didn't, but here he has the snare onto MoMA, and MoMA is being chased by Unstoppable here. Throws off the silence, is going to flash over the wall, and this probably will be the flash. There it goes. There it is. And then Uder is coming in, trying to get some damage, and Takashi is very close to going down, is able to pick up MoMA with the Ignite. One more attack no. will be able to do it. The Ignite is able to pick it up, but now Shivana will probably be able to pick up this kill just too far ahead. The flash away from Udyr mm. actually is going to ba barely be able to get him to safety. Almost got that last hit, but uh, yeah, see, this is, this is how you counter aggression with more aggression. Triple A tried being a little bit passive game one, did not work, but now we can see how it's at. We, can, we clearly just from the numbers, there's, they have their little bit of a goal lead. They are, uh, they are up one kill, and uh, it's working out. The early game is working out for against all authority. Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, if, if they can get enough of an early game advantage, then, you know, they will have a strong enough comp through the mid game where they can just continue to snowball. And they, they definitely have a lot of snowball potential. We actually have Shivana coming down uh, to take out Yellow here, going to get a lot of damage underneath this tower with the red buff. Unstoppable is going to take a little bit of damage from the tower, but is going to be able to get out of there. We and we do have the stun onto Taikashi. Uh, Moma is going to be chasing him down. A little bit of damage from N rated, but he should be able to get out of there. It is warded. That bush is worse. They, ha they still have vision on him while he's running away. But they're just going to go ahead and decide to play it safe, let them go. They still have the lead, they want to keep it. They don't want to risk anything right now at this point. Yeah, and actually, uh, N rated here, uh -oh. a little bit out of position. It's going to take a lot of damage from Shivana and Janna, chasing him down with the shield. There's Ryze coming in. He's going to be able to get the kill, but the flash from Tarek is going to be able to get him out of there. And uh, so he's going to be safe. But see, even so, they, they can't let up those er early kills. See, now, now we see like everyone's moving around. Like Now we're seeing like. Uh, like tactical war in motion everyone is traveling in packs like everyone knows exactly the paths they want to use to engage and disengage and we're seeing both teams being very mobile like we see all these wards already by the dragon you know trying to prevent as the invades the ganks as much as they can because triple a they have this position they want to keep it they want to continue being aggressive because if they fall off if they get killed a little bit, if they get if they get caught out and killed, V8 now then becomes the aggressors. 
Oh, we dashes do away. Have the slow. You got the slow, but uh, Graves is able to dash away just in the nick of time. Yeah, Shivana coming down that lane, and that's the thing. They don't really have a good means of keeping them in place, but if that whirlwind had hit, maybe he's in a little bit more trouble, but they should generally be pretty safe in that bottom lane. So, so until then, Triple is going to continue with their advantage in bot. Top lane, the farm continues. And Linek, May, he's coming in with bear stance. Ult goes down on Vlad. He's a bear, he's running. Pool goes down. Atreusmo should be able to get away from this one. But Linek's going to go ahead and take the tower. So as trying to get the damage necessary, but Linek taking the tower a little bit too much. Has to back off, but Moma coming from behind. We can get the gate. We got a little bit of damage. Can the Void do it? The Void can, and the Void will. Meanwhile, bot lane, Dribble continues their push in mid. But uh, from behind, from their own jungle, Sable Blux is coming. Ignites going down on Janna and Yellow. Janna should just be walking around in circles, trying to just, trying to just get that fire off of her. After we trying to get the last damage needs on Graves. Graves is ducking and weaving in and out of the bush, but gets can't run any further. Tarek does get away though. Yeah, and uh, you know, Aphromoo, um doing a good job there, chasing him down with Sivir, does have the great movement speed passives from Sivir, uh, along with the passive from Janna, so it will be very difficult for Graves to kind of escape if the engage goes against them. And so we saw there, you know, even though they've been very aggressive and successful so, successful so far in that bottom lane, um, it's kind of working against them. And Tarek actually taking a few hits on himself also in bot being stuck out just a little bit too much. But I mean, the gold, Triple A, 1K up, it's, it's, it, for, it, to, it speaks quite a bit of how fantastically aggressive they've been this early game and how, how well it's working out for them. And, but like I said, the one, one bad team fight can swing this into V8's favor. And here we actually see uh, a lot of what Against Authority is trying to do is you know, counter ganking. So we have Udir and Warwick coming down here, hoping to bait uh, them in onto MoMA. We will have They're the snare for the from dive. MoMA, and then uh, Soaz is going to come in with his ultimate. This should be a kill. Some damage from Udir. He will flash away, but he will yes. be able to get it. Udir didn't really need to flash, and now he's underneath the tower. MoMA doing a good job of tanking it for him, though, so they will be able to get out of there. Fantastic timing on those suppression ults. Malzahar just fantastic. Gets him under tower. Warwick then comes in. Everyone's sharing damage from the tower, and they manage to get off that kill convincingly in mid. MoMA flashing in. Not quite yeah. necessary. That was a bit of a waste. Uh, it's but kind now of unfortunate <laughs> because <laughs> oh. Linux should have gotten the stun. Uh, MoMA going to try and pick up a kill on Shivana. Not going to happen. And now Sivir is chasing after Linux. Uh, he should be able to get out of there, but he, you know, unfortunately actually stunned a creep instead of stunning Shivana. So the flash in from Malzahar, they would have had the kill there. Yeah. Um, but so. even so, you know, it's it's definitely working out for them so far. This, you know, kind of aggressive single target damage uh, team. We have Muffin Cutie kind of sitting in the middle of the team there. He's going to have not, to get out. Will not get spotted. Yeah. Wow. What? Linux just walked right past the bush. Didn't even bother going through it. They have no idea Muffin Cutie's there. Yeah, and so now they do have vision of them at Dragon. And, you know, we do have some good zoning from Graves. But Udyr's generally not going to take a lot of damage. And the stun from Tarek, they are going to get out of there. They don't want to have them chase them down because the whole team yep. from V8 would be coming in. Wonderful ward coverage from AAA. They have the ward over in V8's blue. They know the rest of the team is nearby. They know to back off. Hopefully they know how to back off. Ooh, Linex stole the, bear, uh, the nice. dragon. So now they've got to get out of there. Shivana is in pursuit, and Graves should be able to get out of there. They will be able to get out, but... Fantastic steal. Yeah, that steal is definitely going to help them out as far as gold. I mean, obviously. <laughs> uh, but a 2k gold advantage already for against all authority. And this is exactly what they wanted to try and accomplish with their team. Win the lanes and then, you know, win the early game. They're definitely doing that right now. And, you know, it's, it's the, the double suppress is actually working out very well for them so far. They got that kill on Takashi X earlier on incredibly convincingly probably should have backed off a little bit after that but still you know they have their lead they're still keeping their lead and right now just all the lanes being pushed in and now it's, it's freeing up moma to go around and roam if, if if he so desires and right now actually cooldowns all going down from n rated everyone is trying to get away trying to get a last little bit of damage on n rated will the ignite do it yes it will doesn't even need the extra attack and yellow trying to move away boomerang Blake, can we see it he was Afrimu is just taking the tower, trying to get that last bit, will not get it. 
Yeah, and the flash from Graves will save him there. We do have the Ignite on Detri Eskimo, and the ultimate from Warwick should potentially be able to get the kill. Summer Just Hill. one more attack does it, but Warwick is taking going to take some damage from Vlad. They are going to chase away uh, Shivana there, so yeah. good job by Lenak coming in to help Soaz up top. And Tree Eskimo burned everything. Burned the Summer Heal and the Ignite trying to stay alive, but just could not do it. But here's the concern. Um, you know, Sivir is doing pretty well in this bottom lane. We'll, you know, be getting stronger and stronger as the game progresses and then have this, you know, very tanky team, very tanky and high damage team uh, standing in front of her. So uh, the key will be for Against All Authority to continue putting on pressure and start picking up the dragons. They were able to steal the last one. But if they can get control where they can actually, you know, I guess more legitimately take the dragon, <laughs> then, uh, you know, that would definitely be nice. Until then, we continue to push Warwick still remaining top lane. Did Warwick even back? No, he didn't even back. He just decided to get all the health he needed from his Q and off of creeps. But he is low on mana, so he probably should be backing soon to recover. Unstoppable, still keeping up the counter, you know, the counter jungle attempts, but wards going down from both teams. I mean, Triple A's ward coverage this game is, is, is huge yeah. right now. And uh, we have a pause going down. And that's the thing we were saying coming into this game, uh, you know, they need to have good ward coverage knowing how aggressive against all authority is going to be. And, you know, sometimes you kind of think, uh, have to think of the situation, all right, when are you buying too many wards? We have, you know, three here on the dragon. That might be too many on the dragon. But <laughs> e even so, they recognize that they have a, you know, very strong late game team. And as long as they don't allow against all authority to take too many advantages early in this game, V8 will, you know, have that strong team fighting team as the game progresses. Yep. So, I mean, I'm, I'm taking a look at the items here, and uh, I've noticed that Warwick has actually bought himself a Chalice, mm -hmm. which I think is actually a, a very genius pick from Warwick. You're up against Vladimir, lots of uh, AP damage, and in order to sustain the lane, he's going to be needing to use his Q a lot. And if you're doing that in the lane, you're going to be running out of mana fast. I mean, that's actually a really, really smart buy. Yeah, and the uh, the Wits End, you know, does counter Vladimir a lot. It, he will have a lot of DPS on his ultimate uh, to go along with that MR. It will be tough to move Warwick out of lane. However, Vladimir does have a Will of the Ancients now, is level 9, so this is about the time where it's basically yep. I don't know, impossible to move Vlad out of lane, so he will continue to farm. We do have a slight advantage, uh, a pretty good advantage, actually, for Warwick so far. But um, I don't know, I think we'll start to see that lane move more towards uh, Vladimir's favor. Yep. Pings from V8 going down onto MoMA in mid. Shivana is actually in their jungle. He might have an attempt on them in the near future. Shivana is kind of uh, indecisive about where to go. But Udir in bot lane laying in wait. Waiting for V8 to push in. And Stoppel will actually getting out of position. The, that tri bush is worse. He has to ult out. And Raiden in the thick of it, being focused down, but Muffin Kitty actually getting in the middle with the ult, separating the members of AAA. But Shivana does go down to Udir. Muffin Kitty will follow momentarily. Udir, this turtle shield is not going to be enough to do it, but Moma coming in with the ult on Aphromu will be able to finish him off. And now Takashi X has no choice but to leave three for one in favor of AAA. That is amazing. Yeah, really impressive control by AAA. Always, you know, just kind of moving around the map. Uh, Malzahar has done a good job of roaming. Right, you know, he's not going to get a lot of kills onto Takashi, but uh, he, you know, he has had two so far. But it, as long as he can keep mobile, mobile and help his team, that's going to be huge. And then you saw actually Janna uh, trying to use the ultimate to get Shivana to safety and actually knocking Linek all the way over, you know, by Shivana. And Linek was exhausted, but able to pick up that kill. Uh, before going down, which, you know, definitely helped him out in this fight. And now Against All Authority is going to steal this blue from Ryze, which is really going to hurt him in that mid lane and coming into this mid game. So, yeah, I mean, it's... Triple is doing... They're doing work in these team yeah. fights, man. It's just the, the suppression comp is working out ridiculous well. For, you don't even need both of them down there in order to get, you know, to get the combo off. Like, Malzahar was just, just his presence... He has the slow necessary, he has the damage, he has everything he needs right now. I've honestly been a little bit surprised. I mean, Nazahar has always been a great champion, he's been a lot of fun, but yeah. um, I don't know, against all authority, just really impressive so far. Uh, you know, bot lane's been really strong. Warwick, you know, taking control of top lane, which is what you want. If you want to be aggressive, you don't want to fall behind in any of the lanes as far as farm. And then against all authority, able to come around and pick up a number of kills uh, with Malzahar and 
I don't know, it's just, it's been pretty uh, interesting so far. They do have plenty of burst damage, and if they can pick people off in fights as the game progresses, then I, you know, maybe underestimated their team fighting potential as well. But we'll see once, you know, the teams start grouping up. But right now, Against Authority is at a, you know, pretty sizable advantage. So if they can continue it, then they could take this game pretty easily. 3K lead, turret from, tur turret on bot is gonna go down. <sighs> And there's still the fight up top. The farming continues, and I think a dragon, uh, dragon should be coming up, not to, uh, not to, uh, in the near future, I believe. So right now, I think it war is uh, Jana's getting the wards necessary down, getting the proper vision on dragon. When it does come up, Linak is in that river bush. He has been spotted at 5v8, so Muffin Q is actually going to wisely back off, not go back into the river. She will be trapped if she does. And Unstoppable X top river is actually unwarded by Triple A, so this could be bad for Soaz. Yeah, and I, I mean, you can see there, he actually didn't even want to gank. I think he was just making sure he could clear out uh, if yeah. Udyr was there, and they were planning on getting but more Udyr kills. Udyr is here now. Unstoppable X uh, just trying to do their dance, but Tracemo does put the ult down on Soaz just as a defensive, just as a defensive maneuver, just to dissuade him from pushing anymore. And Buffy Cutie is now top, looking to assist. And but you know what? So is Enraged. So is Tarek. Three v three situation here, possibly very soon here in on top lane. But uh, Tarek and Udyr are going to decide to back off. But V8 doesn't quite know until they show up in a lane that that river is not warded anymore. And here they are. They're oh, now the mid. flash Loma suppress. Wonderful flash. Fantastic stun following up from Linak. Takashi X should be going down. Wonderful chain stuns from AAA. Takashi X will fall underneath tower. And wow. it looks like Unstoppable X may be next. The Ignite will finish off. Yes, it will. Along with that dot from Malzahar, it will be enough to do and it. That's exactly what Against Authority wants for, you know, yep. V8 to run into these fights kind of one at a time. Um, you know, as opposed to a group. And when you do that, they've all got single target damage. They don't, you know, have to worry about any repercussions and are able to pick up those kills. But uh, yeah, really impressive play. And I've, I've been kind of surprised. I, Warwick has fantastic sustain, but that he's able to, been able to harass uh, Vladimir so effectively in top lane. Um, you know, I, I assumed that Vladimir was actually going to farm a little bit better. And now against all authority is going to be able to pick up this dragon. Yep, they've already stolen the first one. They're gonna get the second one. Such a commanding lead, not even 20 minutes in yet. It's a 7.5k goal lead, it's pretty damn good. V8 now on the defensive end. They cannot be the aggressors as they've been throughout most of this tournament. They are now on defense. They have no real other choice. They are warded so extensively right now. I mean, like, look, 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 at, look at all this ward coverage AAA has. You know, most of, you know, every, everything like around mid, they have all the coverage they need not only to keep continue pushing up mid but to help secure the dragon that they just got and this is i mean this is what we were talking about that against all authority wants to take this early advantage and that's how they're going to be in this game i still think that v8 has a you know very strong team fight team a very strong late game team once they get a couple more of those uh defensive items and get a little bit tankier but uh against all authority just really you know being incredibly aggressive in this game able to pick up a number of kills an 8k gold or 7k gold advantage um just really impressive i'm gonna you know see i you know might have to eat basically half my words i'll just say all <laughs> of them, eat my words on this one all right we, have, we haven't had lunch yet we need we need we're gonna have to we're gonna have to carve up after this if we go to game three i am is i I'm, I'm hungry for more of this action like i i've like all across like Twitter, chat, you know, Reddit, everyone's been going on about like uh, against all authority, you know. We kinda we, you know being downplayed a little bit, but you know what, they are really one of the top teams in Europe right now and we are seeing them go to work against you know, they've seen what V eight can do, they face it first game and they learn like they realize, okay, let's let's figure this out. What can we do against this aggressive team? And they've got it. They've got their comp down, they've got their strategy down and they've, they're just put it into execution here today. Yeah, and I think the big thing is the, you know, changes to Warwick. Um, you know, he's always been able to sustain in lane very easily as that top lane, but I think the passive dot that he has now just it, uh, makes him able to just deal that much more damage to, you know, Vladimir and harass him down some. Um, makes him a little bit stronger pick now, you know, obviously since he was buffed, but I mean, yep. 
maybe, you know, see him coming into play. We actually have N rated here going to be able to get the stun off. Not going to happen. But uh, they're all kind of roaming around as a team trying to get kills. I would be expecting one of them to pick up an Oracle soon because when you're this far ahead, you really you need to get that Oracles, um, you know, to just to continue map control. And we yep. see the defensive wards from V8 preventing them from kind of losing any more members. Yep. Then so uh, AAA is just uh, keep their playing point top lane, allowing Lorik to finish off the top tower. Graves actually looks like he's going to be stealing uh, V8's blue in a second too, if not uh, not just uh, there for the coverage. And Triple A continues their bush top, trying to drag out the members of V8 and something they don't want to do. And here he is, Tree Eskimo being caught out in the jungle, being ulted down by Warwick, and will begin to chase so many knights going down. Vladimir oh, ult wow. will end, and Raiders should be falling to that, but Linak goes down as well. V8 is actually winning this engagement here. Yeah, and there, there it is, is kind of what I was expecting wow. more of. When they have their whole uh, team there, yes, uh, against all authority, is able to take down, you know, one or maybe two members there. They were able to pick up Vladimir, but Vladimir, after they bursted him down really low, they, you know, it took him a while to finish him off. I think once Graves comes with the team, that'll, you know, be a big difference. It was a 4v5 engage, mm -hmm. um, you know, so they, they were down a little bit there. But, uh, so they'll be able to burst you know, down someone faster. But even so, you saw the rest of their team was pretty high health. They do have a very tanky team. And uh, if you know, I would probably expect Janna to maybe pick up a Zeke's Herald as the game progresses so that you know, all these tanky uh, champs can kind of sustain a little bit better. Um, you know, a, a Will of the Ancients would definitely help Vladimir after he gets tanky. He definitely wanted, wants to finish uh, the Banshees first. But actually, he went for a Quicksilver Sash which is actually better than Banshees in uh, a number of regards. It doesn't you know, block the same poke and damage, but just to be able to cleanse the, supp cleanse the suppression from Warwick and Malzahar, I would expect a couple of more of those to show yep. up on the team as the game progresses. I mean, you saw him, you, he did build the catalyst and I can't help but feel that he was going towards Banshees, but you know, it's kind of like, you know, you have a rise with a Banshees going against a team with a suppress. It's like, okay guys, all we gotta do is, you know, pop the bubble and we're in there mm -hmm. and it's just like you know what, i don't want to give you that opportunity plus it also you know the, the the recovery time on the banshee's shield is just like you know he may get in more engagements before that shield comes up we need the immediate satisfaction of the quicksilver session right now stop Alex running into this bush we got a full five on five team fight here in mid muffin cutie should be the first one to fall takashi x will also go down and janna ult going down and trying to displace and getting those heals Everyone's falling. Udir, Shivana, Vladimir, and now Triple A. They have the upper hand. Muffin Cutie will now go down. What, what is yeah. that? Really was that was just like play by against all authority. And they, the big thing with that fight was they took out Janna early. Um, you know, Siver getting some nice damage, taking down uh, Soez there. But by taking out Janna early, like we said earlier, she's the only one on the team who can uh, stop the suppression for their team. So yeah. as long as they take them out she's not able to allow her team to kind of continue tanking and against all authority was able to clean up that fight i was a little bit surprised how much aoe damage they have aframood trying to come in here and get some damage he's actually doing a pretty decent job he's got to stay away from those disables because he will go down pretty quickly but an inhibitor for against all authority and now they are in complete control of this game not just from a gold standpoint but they don't have to worry as much about engaging fights. They can just roam the map like they want to, pick people off, and V8 has to be in the defensive position here. And you can't farm as V8 anymore, which is the big thing. Yep. They can't push to late game because they have to play so defensively now against this really aggressive team from against all authority. Now we mentioned before, you know, they're being <laughs> counter, they're being warded so heavily right now, and they may not even be aware of how, you know, how warded they are. Did, uh, did Janna actually get in Oracles or no? Oh, uh, she did, Janna not. did not. So yeah, those wards are going to remain. Against all authority will re will remain to have their vision on V8. There's the, there's V8 can't make a move without Triple A knowing about it. And in order you know, to be in that sort of situation when you're 10k down, it's it's devastating, absolutely devastating. And all of mid, all of mid is pushed right through to inhibitor. If they lose another team fight before the inhibitor responds, Triple can just go in and charge the Nexus and win. They don't even need Baron. Yep, yeah, a V8 uh, going to be able to grab this dragon here. That'll help them catch up a little bit on gold. They will want to watch out about against all authority moving in towards Baron. So we do see the clairvoyance from Janna uh, lets them understand where their position is. So they are going to be able to regroup here for a fight and. 
you know, they definitely need to keep Janna alive. That's uh, going to be pretty key for these fights. Triple A now clearing out the jungle of V, ensuring that they cannot get the farm that they need. They could just straight out tank top tower if they really wanted to, to take it out. They might just do that, taking down the minions first, waiting for the creep wave. The uh, Voidling, very nice positioning from Malzahar to tank those first few hits of the tower. This will go down really quick. Will they continue the push? I think they're actually going to go head over to... Uh, they might they might head over to Baron. They might also be setting up a trap waiting for me to come back in. Well, they will be very safe dealing, yep. uh, doing Baron. They will do yep. it very quickly, and then you know no one's going to get low. So it is a pretty safe Baron. A lot of times when you're this far ahead, you kind of don't want to go for you know these big objectives because it provides your opponent with uh, an engagement opportunity where they can maybe come back into the game. But yep. you do see they are you know still all very high. Uh, Shivana coming in trying to nope. steal it, not going to happen. So Unstoppable is going to go down very quickly. Desperation move right there, purely. Yeah. And uh, against all authority, should finish this game uh, pretty easily. Yep. Now we're now we have the slow push. Triple A has Baron. Just gonna go ahead, push up those minion waves, take out the rest of the inhibitors. And with Baron buff, they're in such a commanding lead now that there's really nothing V8 can do to defend this. They're gonna go in onto this top turret. Linux gonna take the first few hits. Minions will come in. This, uh, we're, we're getting very close to V8's last stand. Just a few moments, this inhibitor now gonna be focused. Triesco ducking in and out, waiting for his opportunity. Takashi X, he's on the outskirts. No ults being used quite yet, but Australia's going down. Triple A is getting back into position, continuing to push down the waves. Bot turret, bot inhibitor should be in our next target. Tree Eskimo is already there getting ready to do what defense he can. Not going to be all too much, but all of V8 is, is up. Yeah, and I think the big thing with uh, against all authorities team at this point um, as far as team fights is concerned, because they're so strong, Malzahar can just zone them with his AoE, and if they step up into it, then all the rest of them can kind of just jump on them, pick up some kills. This is allowing Yellow to just come in and take these towers very easily, knowing that if they try and engage, then, you know, against all authority, we'll be at the advantage. Yep. <clears throat> so right there, wait for the minion waves. World is doing a nice little dance, and now Triesimo being focused down with the Malzahar ult. Trying to get all the ignites going down, trying to do it. This is the last stand from V8, and it's not going to be doing all too much. And right now, just individual members just being focused down. And then the last push comes in. Muffin Q not going to be able to do all too much. This turret will go down, the inhibitor will go down, and they will push in. And this will be GG against all authority, winning game two. We're going the distance as, as fitting for our grand finals. We are going to be going to game number three, as it should be. This will be it, last turret going down, and then the Nexus, not much Ephraim can do about this. And there you have it. We are heading to game number three, folks. V8 versus AAA, whoever wins this next game. First seed and fully comped trip to Vegas. We are gonna go to commercial real quick, and then uh, we're gonna do our post game and then head into game number three. So do please stay tuned. <laughs> 